Can we can we just chill out with the sound, please? Yeah. <laughs> so that's that. <laughs>
Before you can get another word out, you're rudely interrupted when someone smacks your books and custom engraved measuring spoons out of your hands and onto the ground. <gasps> hey! It's Ashley, your arch rival. She's totally evil, but she can't help but be filled with jealousy. She can get anything she wants and she knows it. Hello, Ashley. Oh, I didn't see you there, chicken shins. You leave Senpai Fire shins alone. They're perfectly normal shins. Ugh, you can't stand Ashley. Even her name is annoying. You know for a fact that it's actually Ashley, but she had to add extra letters to make herself feel, make herself feel better than everyone. If anyone here knows what perfect shins look like, it's us. We're not going to let you or your really weird insults get to us. Across the quad, you see Ashley's best friend, Van Van the Man Man, has stopped to look at his own reflection in the mirror. His pants are so tight, you can see him casually working out his glutes while he styles his hair. No lie, they're rocking glutes. <clears throat> Van Van? You rang rang? You've never been sure what their arrangement is, but as long as you've known them, Ashley and Van Van have been just as close as you and Miriam, but substantially more devious. I can't believe that University of Cooking School Academy for Learning would ever allow people like you to attend as students. I know, right? You think they just hand us our diplomas now. Or maybe hire us on as professors. Your amateurs could learn a lot from us. With the first day of school about to start, there's just not time to properly tell these two off, so you resist the urge. Let's go, Miriam. Psh, see you later, losers. As you approach the door, you see a goofy-looking kid pushing hard against the window next to it. Oopsie. I think it's broken. You reach forward and easily pull the door open. Ah, uh, that should do the trick. I love you. I think you mean thank you. My name's Pop. I was named after my Pop Pop. He's old. Could someone like this be also be a student at the school? He must be one heck of a chef. Also, his name tag clearly says Bob, but I guess he's reading it upside down. Hi, Pop. I'm Senpai Fire. So, are you going to make me hold this door all day? Nope. And with that, the young man walks into the building ahead of you. Is it just me, or is he kind of cute? I think it's just you. <laughs> you both shrug your shoulders before following him into the building. You stand at the edge of the room, unsure where to sit. Other students wander in and keep themselves busy chit-chatting. A scruffy-looking pooch takes his place at a podium at the front of class. Adorable. Now, now, quiet down, everyone. Who is this unreasonably cute pup, and why is he in our culinary class? You must be Sprinkles, head instructor and CEO of UCSAL. Please, call me Professor Dog. I may be cute and little and fluffy, but I still demand respect. <laughs> what? A cute dog is our professor? This is the best school ever. I guess only a dog's nose is capable of picking up all the nuances of fine dining. Out of nowhere, wind begins to rush around you as a swirl of cherry bloss blossom petals fill the air inside the classroom. I'm chilly. Someone close the window. And then he walks in. <laughs> oh my god. You're immediately swept up in the aura of this new student and his remarkable goatee. Who knew anyone could be so handsome? Time stands still. It's him! It's... If it isn't, my favorite student, Harland. Colonel Sanders interrupts Sprinkles. Sorry, Professor Dog, before he can finish his sentence. Please call me Colonel. <laughs> Colonel Sanders. <laughs> what am I doing? Okay, hold on. I'm gonna need more water for this. I just want to make sure the sound is good.
hushed murmur rolls through the classroom as Colonel Sanders walks down an aisle of dust. Suddenly, the room is sweltering. Sweat begins to bead across your brow. You feel like everyone is looking at you, and you're not entirely wrong. Ugh. And this over here must be sweaty sweats a lot. Uh -huh. Maybe we should open that window back up before the faucet pits melt into a puddle and evaporates entirely. You two both know my name. We were in the same kindergarten class. And what is with all your really weird insults? You two both know my name. Okay, we read all that. So we're gonna clean up a bit. It's a good thing you didn't forget about the deodorant this morning. This classroom is hot, hot, hot. It's a little weird, okay? Because it's not that attractive. I don't, I don't understand. <sighs> Professor Dog steps in to settle the class down and set some ground rules. Welcome to the University of Cooking School, uh, the greatest culinary academy in the world. The birthplace of culinary legends, past, present, and future. Many challenges await you. There will be tears. There will be blood. There might even be really adorable tiny food. And when all is said and done, there will be a battle. You will lift your sporks and compete in the broom cooking arena. Just then, another student enters the classroom and interrupts the professor's rousing speech. Hi, guys. Sorry I'm late. I hope everyone had a good summer. I really miss... Quiet! Late to class is bad enough, but interrupting my monologue? You're on the fast track out of here, young man. Be sure you're not even in the right place. Don't, don't you recognize me? This, this is my third year in the school with you as my teacher. Everyone stares at him blankly. Does, does no one remember me? I'm... You're expelled if you utter one more word before I finish. <laughs> Let that be a lesson to you students that tardiness is unacceptable. Even Clank made it here on time, rolling halfway across town on his tiny wheels. You turn to see the student Sprinkles referencing, who appears to be some sort of industrial kitchen appliance. Where The class bursts into laughter. Oh, Clank, you rascal. Sprinkles walks in the classroom as everyone stands in silent obedience. When he gets to you, he lifts his nose into the air and takes a deep sniff. Hmm. Your diet is lacking. Based on what I'm picking up here, you definitely need a multivitamin. But the class, ha ha, a multivitamin. You should be taking better care of yourself. You've never had a talking dog as a teacher before, but Sprinkles' reputation for being smart but tough is well known. You decide to try and butter him up by giving him a treat from your pocket, but what kind? Beef treat, rubber ball, chicken snack. Well, um, this is a chicken game, so. You reach beneath your apron and return with the chicken snack in your hand. Sprinkles' eyes go wide as he locks onto it. His favorite! Well, well, well. I think there might be some competition for new star student. The furry professor immediately devours the snack, leaving your hands slick with a coating of warm doggy drool. You see the other students eyeing you jealously, but pay no mind to them. If they wanted to succeed in life, they should have learned the importance of carrying a range of dog treat flavors on them at all times. Settle down, young chefs. Take your seats. Prepare to have your minds open to the amazing possibilities of culinary creation. As everyone rushes to claim their favorite seats, you're left standing at the front of the room. Only two options remain. Hey, Senpai Fire, there's still a seat here. It seems that no one has claimed this seat next to me, if you're interested. Oh, this is a choice! Okay, two good options, but which will you choose? Hmm. Well, we can sit by our best friend, or we can sit by this dude who we just met today. Go with my best friend. You move to take your seat by Miriam. I'm so glad to have you near me to so support me through this class. Of course, you're my best friend. Who else would I sit by? Colonel Sanders? He has such a magnetic personality, and there's a seat open right next to him. If you had sat there, you might have gotten to know him a little better. I'd never sacrifice that friendship. Besides, I'm sure I'll get a chance to talk to him later in the semester. I've got three whole days. That's like a lifetime. So you say, but now that Miriam mentions it, that Colonel Sanders is just so darn dreamy. As soon as you've settled into your seat, the professor makes an announcement. Think fast, it's time for a pop quiz. Oh, Jesus. I'm not, I don't like pop quizzes. They make me nervous. Yay, a quiz about me! <laughs> this incredibly important and surprisingly short quiz will tell me if you're ready for a life at culinary school. Keep your knife sharp and your focus sharper. Here comes question number one. Oh, God. If train A is traveling to point B and train B is traveling to point A, how important is it to wash your hands before cooking? Meh, depends. Extremely. Looking at you, Pop. Doesn't matter at all. Let's go with extremely. That's right! Uh, forest is to tree as chicken is to blank. Feather, night vision goggles, a slam dunk. 
Uh, well, chicken and feather go together. That's right. What is the most efficient eating utensil ever created? A comically oversized fork, a meat tenderizer, or a spork? A spork. That's right. <laughs> what food is best for a broken heart? Anything, as long as it is prepared with love and not too much salt. Camel meat? A pancake that looks like a silly face. Uh, let's go with anything. That's right. Is Sprinkles a good boy? No. He's a talking dog that teaches at culinary school. He's the best boy. Yes. That's right. <laughs> Your total score is perfect score. Five out of five. Wow, be honest, did you cheat? Nope. Look up to see that Colonel Sanders has been watching you tally your score. He's impressed. I know we just met, but I have to confess. I think you have a beautiful brain. See, I didn't even have to sit next to him. I got to sit by my best friend, and I still got hearts. Ha diggity, said a pie of fire. You just scored some major Colonel Sanders points for that performance. May I have your attention, students? I have an important announcement to make. Time for lunch. Wow, the cafeteria is as nice as any restaurant you've ever eaten at. Makes sense that a school dedicated to cooking would be serious about eating. A delicious fragrance wafts through the room and tickles the end of your nose. Your mouth waters. You smell that? That must be our lunch. It smells crazy good. Everyone, can I have your attention? I is it about lunch? No, I, I just wanted to apologize for my tardiness. You see, I was... Howdy, folks. I'd like to make an announcement. Okay, dickbag. He was talking. Hey, I was... It's about lunch. Everyone cheers. But I... Shh. Lunch, lunch, lunch. She said, shh. In honor of the new semester, I have prepared something special to share with everyone for lunch. Aha! Uh -huh. That must be the smell I smell. Indeed, that smell. You hold your breath waiting to see what food this mysterious student has created. You, you've heard that he's very talented, but were the rumors true? Is this... Colonel Sanders lifts a large bucket above his head. Its contents glimmer in the light. Piled higher, huge pieces of chicken, breaded and fried to a crispy golden finish. The aroma envelops you, and you begin to feel warm and safe. Colonel Sanders has filled a bucket with chicken? What a novel concept. Your stomach begins to grumble, as if to say, stop thinking and start eating. For years, I have been developing a secret recipe for the perfect fried chicken. But my calculation, nothing less than 11 herbs and spices are required to achieve the perfect balance of flavors. You look around and notice that every other student has a pen and paper and is scribbling notes as fast as they can. But that's all I'll say about that. What, you think we want your stupid secret recipe, dude? Pshaw. <laughs> nah, my dude. Nah. I'm just, uh, drafting a last will and testament in case, uh, one of those ingredients is, a uh, poison. Got him. He looks around nervously to see if anyone else is laughing at a sick burn. You wait to see what Zinger Ashley has prepared to follow up, but she suddenly takes a different approach. Yeah, and I was just, like, writing in my diary. Dear diary, today I smell something beautiful. I knew at that moment that only the hands of a true gentleman could fry chicken so tender. You see, her body language changed from bitter and evil to sweet and innocent as she slides closer to Colonel Sanders. She realizes that he is destined for greatness and fame with cooking skills like this. She wants them all to herself. Mm. Oh, please. Hmm. Well, Ben Ben the Man Man, if you don't want any... I'll take his... <laughs> Whoa, hold on. I mean, I, I guess I'll try it. He takes one bite and his eyes grow wide. He starts contorting his face as he tries to hold in his pure exhilaration and act unimpressed. Easy now. There's enough for everyone. Please, my fellow classmates, dig in. Jesus, this is going to be a lot of reading, man. You take one of the pieces of fried chicken out of his bucket and sink your teeth into it. It's amazing. Tasting Colonel Sanders' food transport you to another dimension. Alone with your taste buds, gripping a drumstick in your hand, you float weightlessly. Focus your mind and meditate on this moment, trying to identify every flavor. Savor the moment and everything that it tells you about Colonel Sanders' culinary heart. Swim towards the light. Let's focus. You let the food rest in your mouth and focus on it, scrutinizing every flavor. Salt? Maybe. Pepper? Too obvious. Oregano? Basil? Maybe, but there's something else. Something dark, something spicy. You dig deeper. 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 Yes, even deeper still. Until you find it. Could it be... He really did it. How bold. How adventurous to use... You try to go even deeper into the sea of flavors, but this revelation alone is more than you could handle. You snap out of it and realize that this information was meant to remain a secret, and yet... 
now you know. A mantle of responsibility now rests upon your shoulders. As you look around, you realize that everyone in the room is consumed by the lunch. No one noticed that you've traveled through t space and time. After tasting his food, you try to get some one-on-one -on -one time with Colonel Sanders. You approach him. Colonel Sanders smiles ever so softly as you approach. He stops what he is doing and allows you to break the silence. Colonel, I, I wonder if I could talk to you for a second. Anything for a fellowship? What exactly was on that chicken? How bold to come out and ask. It's an idea I had for a new combination of flavors that will make me my fortune and establish my legacy for all time as I open a chain of hardly six... No. What? Hold on, guys. Sorry, that was an important FaceTime. <sighs> okay. It's just you and me talk here talking. I, I can keep a secret. In fact, I've got some of my own that I'd be willing to trade. What's the rush? This semester is only getting started. We've got two more whole days to get to know each other. I mean, sure. Yes, true. He's clearly not going to uh, give it up easily, but it doesn't hurt to be persistent. You know what they say about secrets, Colonel? Shouldn't learning be fun? Oh. You've got Moxie. I'll give you that. Colonel Sanders looks both ways to make sure you're truly alone and then leans in. You can feel his warm breath as he whispers. Just one ingredient, but you can't tell. I use blank. That's something my great-grandmother taught me. Wow. You'd never have guessed that. In fact, you're not even sure where you'd get some if you searched. And blank definitely isn't the flavor you tasted before, so now you're two ingredients closer to knowing the full recipe. But you don't tell Colonel Sanders that. While you're wrapped up in that huge revelation, you notice that Colonel Sanders has disappeared. While everyone else is still in the cafeteria, you decide to look for him. How? How did he disappear? You were literally just staring in front of him. You find Colonel Sanders outside, standing in the quad. Oh, it's you again. Howdy. Sometimes I like to come outside and look at the school buildings. I think about how my story will continue on after I've graduated. It sounds like you have big plans. I dare say. The biggest. I will leave my mark on this world. You can bet on that. Alone for the first time, you figure now is the perfect moment to show your personality to him. Neg him to show your own strength. Wow him with a big idea to add an additional ingredient to really spice things up. Uh, be modest but thoughtful. Well, I just wanted to tell you that I really enjoyed your food. Now you've got his attention. The flavors were complex but comforting. The interplay between salty, savory, and peppery, it was perfect. I appreciate the compliment, Senpai Fire. I'm sure you'll be a big success. I know we've only met today, but I'm starting to get the same feeling about you. We should head back inside. The next lesson starts soon. You step into the massive cooking arena where the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student gets an oven and all the tools and ingredients they could need. Look at this place. It's magnificent. Finally, we get to show our stuff. Wait a second. Oh no. We have to show our stuff. What if I totally blow it? You're not going to blow anything, except maybe kisses to the crown of the fans you're going to earn with your signature adorable tiny food creations. Welcome students to the cooking arena. For today's lesson, we'll be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair off. Naturally, Miriam looks at you, but unable to control yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders. Hey Colonel, would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? A team of two, two, okay, that is me and you, if that wasn't clear. Want to be my partner? Aww. Sure, Senpai Fire, I'll prepare our station. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to be paired with my best friend. Without you as a partner, Miriam is left all alone. Two different students quickly take notice. Hello, new partner. Beep boop. Hmm. Oh my, two potential partners? I'm sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know who to choose. Looks like you'll have to pick four. Friend duties can be a little awkward, but that's the price you pay for not being alone forever. Who do you want to ask to be Miriam's partner? Now, earlier she said that Pop was cute. Let's go with Clank. Sorry, Pop, but I think Miriam will be partnered with Clank today. It's okay. I already ate. It's not entirely clear if Pop has any, uh, any idea what the point of school even is at this juncture. 
Clank is clearly excited to have some attention. He heats, heats up and begins to roll back and forth. Whirp, whirp, whirp. Hold on there, fella. We don't even know the assignment yet. Technically, Clank might not have a face, but there's something charming and earnest about him. Zzz. Tissue? I hardly know you. Clank judders and a panel shakes loose. You get the impression this is a sign of affection. Looks like you two will be fine. Now it's time to focus on your own cooking classwork. Alright, you two. For today's lesson, we're going to keep it simple. Make a basic dish and divide up the steps. No chef in an is an island. It takes two flints to make a fire. You get the idea. Which dish do you suggest to your partner, Colonel Sanders? <sighs> Steak tartare. Uh, seems easy enough. It's fancy and you don't even need to cook it. Using octopus will blow Colonel Sanders' mind. Your grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy. I love mashed potatoes and gravy. So. <laughs> I've always been something of a down-home chef. I was thinking we could make something warm, inviting, comforting. Maybe mashed potatoes? <gasps> and gravy? I couldn't imagine one without the other. Colonel Sanders casts a coy look at you, causing your whole face to go beet red. Embarrassed, you quickly turn away. I'll go get the potatoes. No, please, let me. Picking perfect produce is a passion of mine. Uh -huh. Looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does someone have a crush on Colonel Sanders? We're just cooking partners. Mind your own business. Sanders' heart is, is my business, and you better keep your fingers off of my man. Did someone call for me? Ugh, no, jeez, Van Van. While I'm over here crushing Senpai Fire's dreams, you're supposed to be taking care of our crossword. It was a deal, remember? That is seriously loud, okay? Colonel Sanders returns, arms full of peeled potatoes. He tosses them into the boiling water and turns his attention to you and your old friends. Oh, howdy there, Ashley. Van Van, are we working in a quartet, in quartet instead of a duet now? Yeah. Actually, no. It looked like Senpai Fire was struggling, so we offered to give them a hand. Jesus Christ, I feel like this is so fucking loud, yo. Uh, you know how it is. These young amateur chefs need a lot of mentoring. I was gonna say, Colonel Sanders, maybe I could also teach you a thing or two about fancy food. Maybe one day, you might be able to get up to my level. Doubt it. <gasps> Don't be rude, Van Van. Personally, I have no doubts whatsoever about Colonel Sanders' ability to concoct creations worthy of admiration. After all, your fried chicken was quite spectacular. But Colonel, if you ask me, I might make a better partner for you than this thing that has positioned itself at your station. Don't you feel deep down that we cast complimentary shadows? We fit together, like a thigh and a drumstick. It just makes sense. Nothing about this makes any sense, but one thing is clear. She's coming for Colonel, if you don't watch out. Ashley is really going at you hard. You need to ask for some backup here before things get ugly. Uh, let's go to my best friend. Turn to Miriam, and as soon as you find her, she senses it and looks back. This girl's friend in need, Radar, is second to none. She immediately comes running over. Is somebody threatening my friend? I will destroy them. Or else you think that Ashley and Van Van were just leaving? Leaving you in the dust? My skills as a chef, perhaps, but stepping away from this com competition? You are sorely mistaken. Miriam, you're a loyal friend, but Senpai Fire is my partner for today's activity. You look for Sprinkles in hopes that he might step in, but he's nowhere to be found. Darn those cute corgis and their short but sturdy stature. You look down at your station and realize that, in the attention of the moment, your hands have been cooking on autopilot. Distracted by the drama, you have already crushed the boiled potatoes in a perfect creamy mashed texture with plenty of butter and cream for flavor. As if your natural passion guided you through the steps, you know so well why your attention was elsewhere. I know just what to do. Chris, hold on. Hold on. We gotta turn that down. We have to turn that down. That is, like, absolutely way too much. Too much. I literally can't. Maybe that is a lot better, I, I'm hoping. That's, that was really loud. Okay. He's holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat, out of which pours a smooth brown gravy, smothering your nearly finished potato dish. <laughs> gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes. The results look spectacular. Granny would be very proud. Colonel Sanders holds a spork out to you. You reach out and grab hold of it, but he doesn't immediately let go. The two of you stand holding the same spork, and for that small moment, all of the madness and pressure in this crazy world stops. Your eyes lock. The moment is electric. Time stands still. If you love something, set it free. 
Together, you dig the utensil into the mashed potatoes and lift a heaping sporkful up. When you see Ashley with a sinister look, you know she's plotting against you to be with Colonel Sanders. And then, filled with rage and without thinking, you fling the sporkful of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid, beautiful face. <laughs> Van Van, do something! <laughs> Scooping up a fingerful, Van Van tastes the dripping mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes, realizes that it's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? Hold on right there, Senpai Fire. We do not waste food in the broom cooking arena. Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you. If you throw one more spoonful, you'd both better be prepared to eat it from wherever it lands. Can I have potatoes, face? Van Van rushes back over and co a covered dish in his hands. Mashed potatoes with gravy, pathetic. In just a few minutes, I've prepared a full meal. Gaze upon my speciality, braised tentacle of octopus and my silky saltwater sauce. Plated on a battle axe blade forged by my supreme chef. Chef? What is the fuck is a chef? Chef ancestors. Ah! You've ignored me for too long. That ends now. It is I who will have first bite, and you will all look on with envy. The interrupting student rushes at Van Van and swipes a bite of his signature dish right off the plate. No, don't! Something about this dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was rushed and may have turned in the process. The results could be toxic. Too late. It has been eaten. I, uh, think I left something in the oven. I, I don't feel so good. It killed him! He's dead! He's dead! <laughs> He's dead! Everyone, step back! Don't take another bite! When you look back at the plate, the rest of it is gone. You notice the tip of the tentacle being slurped up in Pop's mouth. Pop winces in pain for just a moment, and then it is almost immediately back to his obvious, ob oblivious self. Oopsie! Tastes like poison. The entire class is gathered to watch Pop's final moments. Shock has frozen the whole crowd. They are as, as they are as motionless as statues. Ah! The crossbow rings, disrupting the moment and snapping everyone back to reality. It would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things, despite obvious danger, has inoculated him against poisons of all kinds. I'm not sure the professor here is making up money. Um, hello! I just turned into a ghost over here! Seeing that you're shaken up by all that really annoying student... And all his nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches you. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Please let me walk you home. What? Like, for real? Oh, come on! <laughs> a kid literally died. He, he literally died, and nobody fucking cares. He's just, he's dead, and everyone's just like, Meh. You follow Colonel Sanders out of the room. At night, the school building is taking on another vibe entirely. It's dark, and more than a little spooky. Colonel Sanders stands in the quad's neon glow and speaks softly. Those mashed potatoes you made in class today. Before you go on, I, I want you to know, they're not great representation of my skills. I, I didn't even realize I was making them. They were amazing. Tasting them, it reminded me why I became so passionate about food to begin with. Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. Cooking is obviously important to him, in a way that you find inspiring. Now might be the perfect time to tell him you're developing feelings for him. Colonel Sanders. Yes, Senpai Fire? There's something I need to tell you. <laughs> Hold it right there! There's something I need to tell you first! Oh, jeez. You see, when I was just a boy, I had a dream. That one day I would be the greatest chef in the world has ever seen. And every day since, I've been working toward that dream. Day and night. Never stopping. Never resting. Also lifting a lot of weights. Like, so many weights. We should follow our dreams with all our hearts. That our souls may grant them like wishes floating on a shooting star. Ooh. Hey, no, I- You- Shut up! I'm the one here to say inspirational stuff and be the star of the story. Are, are we forgetting that your cookie l cooking literally killed a guy? You cannot prove that. Hmm. I also saw you kill that guy. What was his name? Somewhere in the distance you hear a long, sad sigh. Oh, poor guy. Nobody even knows his name. I don't even know his name. <laughs> Forget him. We're talking about me. Me, 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 me. I'm the hero. Yeah. The spork monster is here to fight a hero. <laughs> <gasps> I, uh, I think I left the, the fridge door open. Later, nerds. How dare you threaten me? I was just letting my, down my guard and connecting with another chef on an emotional level. Be afraid. Be very afraid of me because I'm a monster, see? Is he rhyming on purpose or is that just a coincidence? Before you, But before you can discuss syntax any further, it's a turn-based fight sequence. What will you do? Defend. You decide to defend. Which defense will you choose? Trepidation. <laughs> You close your eyes tight, but then open just one enough to squint and see the spork monster across the battlefield. For some reason, this makes you feel more prepared for what comes next. 
Spork monster goes on the attack. They spit hot gravy at you. You take one damage. Fat lot of good that Vents did. Okay, we'll attack. You decided to go on the attack. Chow down. Chow down does two damage. The fire in your belly made you stronger. Spork monster is really threatened by your attack. Spork monster focuses their mashed mind and draws an energy from Mother Earth itself. They grow larger and more intimidating. How will you respond? Attack. Cook with love. Does one damage. Spork monster is no quitter. Buffed up and ready to rumble, they go on the attack once again. Spork monster, use utilitensil. You take two damage from the attack. If you take much more damage, you're not going to survive the battle. You decide to go on the attack. Cook with love. Does one damage. Spork monster is oozing cheese sauce onto the lawn of the quad. I wonder who's going to have to clean that up. Feeling vulnerable, Spork Monster prepares for its ultimate attack, Rounded Edge. Vow, villain, your reign of terror stops here. Colonel Sanders summons the energy of a thousand chickens. Pot pie, power pinch. Does ten damage. Spork Monster is defeated. You saved me. An injured Spork Monster spews steam into the night. Spare him. You managed to tamp down your disgust at the sight of this gnarly beast long enough to realize that he is still a living creature with pure soul who deserves your pity, not your wrath. Be gone, beast, and don't you dare come back for a follow-up encounter tomorrow. I won't forget this, and it certainly won't be back, like you said. The spork monster scuttles off into the night. The defeated monster left behind a special item. It appears, at first, to be a cookbook, but upon closer inspection, it's so much more. It's a book of magic spells with a golden chicken on the cover. You open the cover and find a library card tucked inside. The last name to have signed it is out is Borco. Hmm. Borco? That name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night, holding the mysterious book in your hands. As you come down from your battle buzz, you realize that your final attack has left you completely depleted. The world around you begins to fade away. Without any energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. Okay, hold on. I need to change the sound effects. Just, just a just a tad bit. It's just a little much. Just a little. Just a, mm, okay. Without any energy to keep your eyes open, yes, darkness overtakes you. Okay. I need to. I need water. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before before your eyes as you fall asleep. He must have helped you get home. In your tired state, you don't know if you could have made it without him. What a guy. You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel your covers being pulled up over you as you are tucked in tightly. Good night, my colonel. In your dream, you're together with Colonel Sanders. For some reason, Sprinkles is also there, instructing your love. Dreams are weird. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> You awake on day two and attempt to process the wild visions you had. Were they memories or premonitions? You lie in bed and stare at the ceiling, thinking about the secret you discovered while tasting Colonel Sanders cooking yesterday. You can't believe he really used blank. And then there was the secret ingredient that Colonel Sanders went ahead and told you outright. Not much of a secret, huh? It's probably just because he already trusts you so much. Sure, that makes sense. We'll go with that. You meet up with your bestie in front of the school. Before you can even tell her about the encounter with the spork monster, she launches into a story of her own. Okay, I know this might sound a little strange, but I think I might be, um, I think I might like Clank. Like him? Like, like Clank? I know, it sounds like it's moving too fast, but there's something about him. I like him. Like, like him. We got to talking after class, and he's actually a totally sweet guy. Not only that, but he's really smart. He told me all kinds of stories about Colonel Sanders. Did you know that Colonel Sanders was the most popular kid in his high school? No, but that does make complete sense. Yeah, but he was so popular that he was voted prom king at a school he didn't even go to. And was also the convertible that he also rode in at the front of the home. Okay. I'm thinking maybe something got lost in pressure cooker language translation there. Either way, uh, maybe it'd be best if we took it slow with Snoop Boy, like I am with Colonel Sanders. You and Colonel Sanders, the coolest guy in school, the most famous student to ever attend University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. You're a thing now. We, well, we definitely connected yesterday. Uh-huh, sure you did. You're great. Why wouldn't he be into you, I guess? Laughing at the implication that you and Colonel Sanders might be a thing is definitely not cool. You are great. You have an idea about how to prove that your love is real. Well, if he's not into me, why did he tell me one of his secret ingredients? 
However, you don't tell her that you know a second ingredient too, which you discovered on your own. Your bestie's eyes light up. A secret ingredient? Yeah, I just said that. A secret ingredient. Is there a dramatic echo in here? Miriam checks to make sure you're alone before continuing. So this summer, while I was on vacation with my family, a lovely man approached me in, this, in the botanical garden where I was wondering, this can't be good. He told me all about his passion for spices, secret spices. The man even gave me some to show me what he meant. He said it was a powder created from super duper rare dried flower petals. And that if I did him a big favor, I could have some of my own. Please, Miriam, don't tell me. So I filled my suitcase with him and brought them home. He was so nice. He even met me at the gate when I arrived. Later when I cooked with them, a very strange feeling came over me. And the flavor was like anything I'd ever tasted. I, I think you're being very liberal, 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 liberal with the meaning of spices here. Whatever, anyhow, we both share an interest in cooking, so we've stayed in touch, you know, like pin pals. I bet he would love to know more about the new spices. Well, I'm definitely not supposed to share Colonel Sanders' secret recipe, and besides, I only know the one ingredient, so I doubt it'd be much use to anyone. Please, please, please! It would mean the world to me. No one has to know it came from you or from Colonel Sanders. Okay. What do you think? Should you protect Colonel Sanders' secret or share it with your bestie? Hmm. Hmm. This is a tough one. I mean... Ah, we'll tell her. Okay, I'll tell you, but it has to say a secret. It won't. Miriam nods furiously. He told me that he uses blank. Never would have guessed that, would you? Her eyes light up imagining such a thing, and you figure that you've satisfied your curiosity and move, she'll move on. However, she immediately turns around and does the some, some thumb typing on her phone that you can't quite see. That's probably not good. Before you can even ask her to affirm that she was definitely not texting secrets to other people, you're interrupted. A wind rushes in. Cherry blossom petals fill the air. It's Colonel Sanders. He's arriving to school. Uh. Hmm. Eh, we'll go to him. <sighs> you decided the best way to show Miriam how serious you and Colonel Sanders are would be to run to him. Surely he'll sweep you up into the back of his stallion and you ride away together. That'll show her good. Oh, Colonel, my Colonel. However, your sudden movement surprised the horse and it rears up, kicking you directly in the face. <laughs> the force of the blow completely knocks you out cold. In the darkness, you see a vision. Ooh, sent by fire. I'm here to deliver you a message. Not this guy. It is important that you remember this exactly as I say it. If you forget, the world could end, so you know it's serious. <laughs> I have been trapped in a realm beyond, but a great prophecy relies on my return. If only you can save me. All you need to do is repeat my name three times. And that name is... But before you can continue, you're suddenly awake. Ah, jeez. You will... <laughs> you will wait to find Colonel Sanders tending to you. He roused you back to life with a satchel of secret spices. Or is that just his natural seasoned musk? Maybe he shouldn't be riding a horse to school, or maybe he shouldn't be running up to animals you don't know. It's hard to say who was in the wrong here. But one thing is for sure, that Colonel Sanders is pretty dreamy. That horse has beautiful shoes. I can really feel how smooth and sturdy they were when they were pressing into my face. <laughs> That's nice to hear. But <laughs> no one truly appreciates good crash craftsmanship anymore. And with that, Colonel Sanders disappears into school, leaving you and Miriam to follow. <laughs> Of course I got kicked in the face. Of course I did. <sighs> when you enter the classroom, you can see your two rivals, Ashley and Van Van, are doing something bad. By the way they're hiding, you know it must be really bad. Like counterfeiting recipes bad. Experimenting with restricted ingredients bad. Summoning a demon bad. You try and get a peek over Van Van's hulking shoulder, but he sees you coming. Whoa there, little one. I'm not sure you're ready to handle this. <sighs> Why don't you make like a bee and mind your own wax, honey? Tell them to stop acting immature. Act like you're not interested in them, but really try and get closer look. You sit near the rivals, but leave your back turned to them. You even hear Van Van mutter something that sounds a bit like a magic spell. However, he notices you eavesdropping, and you try and cover your tracks and improvise an excuse. Ahem, <clears throat> it's time for class, and you're distracting the rest of us who want to learn. Now you've upset them. <gasps> oh, and you're the emperor of cooking, are you? You make the rules? I'm not sure you'd know a good meal if it ate you. Being the best chef in the world takes more than just culinary skills. It takes creativity. 
It takes panache. And it doesn't hurt to use a little evil. You finally get a look at what it is they were hiding, and you instantly recognize it. It's a book, just like the one you found after your encounter with the Sporg monster. That's the same book that I found last night in the quad! Ashley immediately elbows Van Van, who hides the book behind his back. I don't know what you're talking about. That book is a family heirloom, and its contents are secret. Okay. You notice that they haven't been studying the book. They've got Pop pinned to the wall, and they're tossing potato skins at him as he tries to catch them in his mouth. We're playing! Before you can dig in any further, you're interrupted by the arrival of more students. It's almost time for class. Beep beep. Quake must be running late. He's in such a hurry that it rolls right over Van Van's meaty foot. Hey, watch it, you bucket of bolts. If you watch how you talk to him, he didn't do anything. This is Thwomp. Ugh. Who do you think you're talking to? I've never heard such language, not even from a stand mixer. Womp womp. No, your mother was a stand mixer. Or... <laughs> I would not mess with a robot, dude. Van Van jumps to attack Clank, but Clank shocks Van Van and sends him flying across the room. Protect me, Colonel Sanders. These crazed men are about to come to blows. I think it must be over me, but I'm not interested in either of them. Ash's tone is completely changed in an instant. She bats her eyelashes at Colonel Sanders. Surely he must know that this is a ruse, right? Gentlemen, get a hold of yourself. Save it for the arena, at least. Or don't. Honestly, what do I care? I've got lofty career aspirations to focus on. Maybe I can help you with those your business plan. Just then, Sprinkles arrives to signal the true start of the class day. He's panting, which doesn't seem that abnormal. He's a professor, but he's also a dog. Students, students, please take your seats. I apologize for my late arrival. I spent the morning chasing a car all around town, and my tiny legs are very, very tired. But I'm here now, and I hope you're ready to learn. Rub his furry dog belly. He loves it. Sprinkles stops in his tracks and sniffs there around you. Something has him in a trance. It's a scent left on you from Colonel Sanders. Sprinkles jumps on you and licks your face. Down, boy, down! <laughs> that command shouted by Colonel Sanders has snapped Sprinkles out of his trance. I wonder what's up with that. Sorry, I, I got a little carried away. After he catches his breath, Sprinkle regains control of the classroom. Without further ado, we'll review the global history of my favorite fowl, the chicken. You want to pay attention to the lesson. You truly, you do. Which was why, in 1776, at the signing of the Declaration of Independence, it was a chicken who first signed their name. But you can't keep help but daydream about Colonel Sanders, and you miss most of the important parts. When you come to, Sprinkles is holding a tray of food in front of you. Well, Senpai Fire, naturally this appears to you to be a sample platter. Which the item do you want to sample? Um... A... Pepper. Brightly colored pepper stands out from the other items. It sparkles in a most eye-catching way, so naturally you reach out, grab it, and eat it right away. However, your body is not prepared for the heat. The pepper has triggered an intense spice hallucination. It feels like forever as you trip through the universe. What is with me and tripping through the universe? I've been through the universe like t three, four times now. My friend. Ooh. This guy again? I'm here to give you an important message. Ooh. You must avenge my death and fulfill your destiny. All you must do is... <coughs> I was saying to fill your destiny, all you must do is... <coughs> Sorry, I think I've still got some spice stuck in my throat. It's fine, I'll work through. <coughs> to fulfill <coughs> the prophecy... I'm, I'm not coughing anymore. You must. <laughs> you feel yourself begin to regain consciousness. Aw, oh, man. You come to and find everyone is staring at you. That pepper was the last of its kind on earth, and now it's gone forever. You think to yourself, Jesus, I should pay atten better attention. We all make mistakes. I'm sure he'll forgive you. Someday. Come on, it's time for lunch. Before anyone can relax, the cafeteria lights dim. And your rivals enter to make a dramatic announcement. Today's lunch will be prepared via timed competitive cook-off. The level of theatrics with these two is off the charts. Is everything in competition with you two? Yes. Yes. Well, not with me. I'm on a personal journey to learn to love, to learn to love. So, sure, why not? But definitely not to constantly battle. Yeah, stop getting your genres crossed. Don't you have something portable? Don't you have some portable monsters to capture or something? I need to eat if I'm going to have the energy to sustain my education and pursue my dreams of being a master chef. How are any of us supposed to get anywhere if we're constantly fending off challenges from every know-it-all with an apron? Besides, I already brought my own lunch. Send by fire. You should have it. It will give you the energy you need to succeed. <sighs> Miriam reached out and presents a gift to you. My special grilled cheese and tomato soup with chocolate milk to wash it down. And a tartlet for dessert. 
They're so cute. It only takes you about five seconds to eat Miriam's tiny food, but it's just what you needed for motivation. You know what? I've learned enough for today. Let's battle. Just as things reach a boiling point, Sprinkle steps in. Surely he'll put a stop to this madness. Now, now, as soon as we settle down. This is a land troop. Now it's sportsy. Finally, a little sense. You breathe a sigh of relief. At least not until we turn on the timer. Just then, a huge light blasts you in the face, flashing the words, Timer ready. That's what I'm talking about. I stand corrected. If it's a battle you want, it's a battle you'll get. My bestie can, bestie can best the best of them. Best believe it. Like a diamond, I was formed under pressure, and now is my chance to shine. I will defeat you myself. You had his chicken, and you made mashed potatoes and gravy on day one. And you're feeling like you can really impress him again here. It's time to boil some water for the potatoes. Think fast. If the timer runs down, you'll be forced to pick randomly. What temperature does water boil at? Uh, uh, what? What do you think? What? I don't know. You're going to need to season this chicken before you cook it. You don't know Colonel Santa's recipe exactly, but you have an idea. How many herbs? Eleven. That's right, you might not know all of the ingredients yet, but at least you're headed in the right direction. Tail wagging intensifies. Now that you've got some basic steps going, it's time to elevate your craft. What state of mind offers the most flavor? That's right, you must never take this opportunity for granted if you hope to succeed. Okay, Constance are rooting for you, but Ashley is simply stronger and faster than you. You better pick up the pace if you want to survive. When you were a child, your father told you never forget where you came from. Every day you meditate on his advice and draw energy from that place. Now would be a great time to harness that energy, so where does it come from? Small town where big dreams are born. That's right. This is your shot, and you're not going to miss it. You try to shut out the noise of the arena and focus on your cooking. What is the sound of success? I don't... What? You know Skoda Santa's out of the corner of your eye. I believe in you, Senpai Fire. He's actually cheering you on. Which would be awesome, except knowing he's watching you makes you totally forget what you were doing. Now all you can think about is Colonel Sanders. How many spoonfuls of gravy would it take to fill a traditional Victorian- What? What? I think you're supposed to lose here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I know, right? You know what? Shouldn't you be focused on the challenge? You're falling behind. Sorry. Uh. Oh, yeah. We're definitely supposed to lose here. What does that have to do with crafting spectacular fried chicken and delicate bas biscuits? Woof, woof. You're really struggling to keep up. At the next station over, Ashley has already begun plating the elements of her dish. It's colorful and complex. To make a time, you toss your biscuit dough into the stand mixer. As you do, the crowd gasps. Ugh, yikes. I know you, have, you love nothing more than seeing a fellow appliance utilized in a kitchen battle, but sometimes that means sacrificing the personal touch. You might not have any hands, but Senpai Fire does, and a good chef needs to be touching the dough to know when it's properly mixed. There's an easy way and a hard way. You don't get far by going the easy way. When you hear everyone talking, you realize how serious your error was. You immediately shove your hand into the mixer to rescue your dough before it's overmixed. Set by fire, no! But you're not fast enough and your hand gets stuck. It's immediately crushed by the quickly spinning beaters. There's no way you'll be able to use that hand for the rest of the match. Colonel Han Sanders shakes his head in shame. What you often find is that the easy way can turn out much, much more difficult. Everyone stop what you're doing right now. The battle is over. It can't be. I was so close to finishing my dish. Sweetheart, look at your hand. You simply can't go on. Oh, that's too bad. And here I am with a completed dish, ready to serve. Surely that makes me the winner by default. No, no, it wouldn't be fair to complete to compare the two on account of Senpai Fire's injury. You see Sprinkles begin to lick his doggy chops as he looks locks onto the dish. But I suppose you should at least tell us what you prepared. Well, because I'm the sweetest, let's skip straight to dessert. Under this white chocolate dome, you'll find a wide array of delights, take, <laughs> taking you on a journey of flavor that tastes good and tells a story of excellence. I was going to ask Senpai Fire to do the honor, but since you're injured, I'm afraid that pouring this creamer of delicate hot chocolate sauce might be too difficult. Colonel Sanders, if you wouldn't mind lending me your strong, steady hand. Colonel Sanders pours the hot chocolate sauce on top of the dough, causing it to melt away, revealing the ingredients hidden within. Inside, you'll find a delicate fried cheese croquette atop a slice of honeycomb, ice cream two ways, tender nougat, and pearls of blueberry uh, j jelly? Je jelly? Colonel Sanders seems intrigued, but perhaps not impressed as he dips his finger in the chocolate sauce. Mm. Simplicity is in your strong suit, is it, Ashley? <gasps> oh, you. <laughs> as he places a sauce-covered finger into his lips, Ashley leans over and whispers something into his ear. A dab of sauce sticks to his mustache. Internalize the rage. Put yourself between Colonel Sanders and Ashley. 
Uh, we'll just internalize it. Your rage burns so intensely within your eyes that they burst into flames. The flames cause your eyebrows to catch fire and turn to ash, and they fall off of your face. Which means people will have a hard time understanding your emotions for the rest of the semester. Perhaps forever. Embarrassed and ashamed by your poor performance, not to mention your crispy fried brow, you run for the quad to be alone. The beautiful weather feels like an insult. Inside of you, a storm rages. It's Colonel Sanders. He's probably here to tell you that he and Ashley are in love and he's decided to get married. And he won't even ask you to cater his wedding because you're a terrible chef and an awful person. You try to hide from him, but he approaches you directly. I, I know you're hurting right now. Not just from the devastating loss, but from that run-in with the mixer and, and that small fire. <laughs> we should get that checked out. I'm fine. Can't you just leave me alone? I'm a loser. I'm not fit to fill your fryer. I'll never be a master chef. Failure is a part of life. Not just for you, but for all of us. Do you think I've never failed at anything before? That That's exactly what I think. Well, then think again. I wasn't always the man you see before you. Enrolled in culinary school. Incredibly handsome. Successful. Motivated. Well, you're handsome, sure. I was born that way. But I've walked other paths and arrived at dead ends. I was passionate about life. But I failed as an obstetrician. <laughs> I was passionate about justice, but I failed as a lawyer. I was passionate about livestock, but I even failed as a mule handler. That one was especially humili humiliating. Mules could be so cruel. I lost my business partner to a gunfight. I, I, I didn't know. People see my delicate ribbon tie and my well-kept beard and assume that I've got it all together, which is true now. But it hasn't always been. It sounds like this guy could really use a hug. I resolved then that I was going to amount to something. No amount of hours, labor, or money would deter me from giving the best I had to give. As Colonel Sanders changed his focus, you could see something ignite inside of him. A burning passion. One has to remember that every failure can be stepping stone to something better. My new dream is pure. It's honest. It's something that a humble man in a crisp white suit can be proud of. I will create a new chain of chicken restaurants that will bring joy to the entire world. And make up for my past misdeeds. Yay! Just as your moment grows intimate, you're interrupted by a threatening, shadowy presence. Battle scarred from the night before, you prepare for the worst. It's a spork monster! Sporko? It is I. I know I said I wouldn't be back, and after the whole fight to the death thing, maybe you don't really want to see me anymore, but... I just wanted to say that I was wrong to attack you, and I apologize. I know what it's like having to always look over your shoulder. Monster problems, am I right? Uh, oh, thanks, Borgo. I'm glad there are no hard feelings. Getting jumped by a giant creature in the dark of night can really rile a person up. I also want to apologize for the way I switched right into attack mode. I know that you're strong, and cooking school can put a person under a lot of stress. I actually used to go to the school, and I, I wasn't always a spork monster, you see. I, I don't believe it. You were human once? Well, no, I was a golden retriever, but I was still a student. Until one day, some mean kids with a magic spell book cast a dark enchantment on me, and I was forever transformed. A magic spell book? Precisely. I had procured a copy for myself, but somewhere along the way, I've lost it. If you find such a book, I beg of you, respect it. You're a powerful chef and shouldn't rely on such dark and evil magic. No, you should be pre protecting the innocent from those who would cheat them through sorcery and guile. If you need me, don't fear. I'll be there. It sounds like there are some bad cooks in the kitchen of life, Senpai Fire. Together, I am sure we can defeat them. Come back to my hideaway and we can discuss. A personal invite? You can't imagine what Colonel Sanders' home must be like, but it sounds like you're about to find out. Seven inside Sanders' home, surrounded by his things, you start to feel a special bond with him. It looks like you live such an exciting life, Colonel Sanders. Why aren't we calling him Harland by now? Why are we still calling him Colonel Sanders? Every day could be an adventure if you approach it with the right attitude. Long ago, I made the decision to never stop searching, never stop working, never stop imagining. Have you been working on any new recipes of your own lately? I, I'm always excited to talk about food with another ambitious chef. Well, well, there is something. It's just a side dish that I've been tinkering with, trying to find the right balance of flavors and textures. I'm not sure if I've nailed it yet, but I'm close. Colonel Sanders' eyes perk up as he starts to wonder what dish you might be describing. It's meant to pair with something spicy or something crispy, both, perhaps? Now you've got him right where you want him. Should you reveal your new creation to him or keep it a secret just for you? He has his secrets. All right, then. Keep your secrets, then. It's a secret. Actually, I've, I've said too much. Please, forget I've ever said anything. You can practically hear Colonel Sanders' heart beating in his chest. He tries to act demure, de demure, but his facade begins to crack. 
I, I can appreciate a good secret, of course. In fact, I've got many, nearly a dozen in my fried chicken recipe alone. But I would hope that you could learn to trust me with yours. Well, I suppose you did share a secret ingredient with me yesterday, so it would only be fair. Colonel Sanders' face grows serious. Ah, uh, yes, about that. You see... Yes, Colonel? I haven't been completely honest with you. The secret I told you was a fake. Oh no, the ingredient you shared with Miriam, it wasn't true! You're angry with Colonel Sanders for lying, but the fact that you revealed his secret shows that he was probably right to do so. You mean it wasn't one of the real 11 secret herbs and spices? You see, we had only just met, and I had to make sure that you were trustworthy and capable of keeping my most important secret to, to me. My recipes are priceless. And well, I have something to confess. That secret ingredient you told me, I shared it with Miriam, my bestie. Mm. Unfortunately, I already knew this. I was very disappointed. But now that you've come clean, we can start building our relationship as fellow chefs again. I promise to be honest from here on out. I really do. I'm counting on you. Then in that case, I present to you my original coleslaw. The shredded cabbage dish glistens in the light of Colonel Sanders' Lux Hideaway. <gasps> Magnificent! Together you chowed on to the creamy slaw until just a spoonful remains in the bowl. Do you mind if I hold on to the last bite? I'd like to have it around so that I can admire its taste later and think back on this moment. You could offer to make him more, but he seems like a very sentimental kind of guy. Uh, sure, well, why not? Please, make yourself comfortable. I'll be back in just a moment. You realize that now would be a perfect time to do this, some snooping. We're literally supposed to be building up our relationship, okay? And you are just fucking it. Around the room are various items that you can look at closer at. Each item seems to radiate memories and emotions. Tap an item to discover more about the colonel. Okay. An adorable little baby boy crawls across the floor from the goatee and mustache combo he sports. You figure that this must, this must be Colonel Sanders himself. With that, or maybe it's the drumstick that he seems to be waving like a rattle. Who frames a baby picture of just themselves? Why not? Why wouldn't you? Probably the same type of person who would make their own face the logo of a company they founded, am I right? <laughs> Tap on an item. Okay. The photo appears to be Colonel Sanders, except he's an old man visiting the pyramids of Egypt? Maybe this is where you discovered one of the secret herbs and spices? Okay. One of the framed photos shows an old man who looks a bit like Colonel Sanders standing with a friend. They hold fried chicken drumsticks and appear to be cheersing them. Wait, I don't see that. They're not. No, they're not. They're not cheersing anything. You look closely and see that there's a short inscription. I wonder who my friend Pete is. A lock of silver hair is woven through the teeth of the comb. Upon further inspection, you realize that the hair therein isn't just silvery in color, it's actually made of spun silver. <laughs> you notice a very realistic stuffed chicken sitting on a corner table. When you pick it up, you realize it isn't just realistic, it's real. Taxidermy? It must have been important to Colonel Sanders when it was alive. A little note clipped to the chicken's foot reads, The true state bird of the great state of Kentucky. You gaze out the window across the vast lake and mountain range beyond. Just then, the ghost of student pops up. Are you thinking about heading out into the world on a quest to avenge my death? Wait, what? I've never even learned your name. Why would I avenge you? I could just tell you my name right now. It's... Did you say I'm in the middle of something? You open the window a crack and the ghost of student is swept out with a breeze. No, that's fucked. Take a closer look at a large urn sitting on a nearby pedestal. There's a plaque on it. It's dusty. But when you wipe it off, you can read the inscription. It says, here lies the ashes of all my past careers and business failures. Poor guy. Scented candle. You pick it up and try to identify the smell. Pour out power tool? Freshly starched collar? Piece of wood floating in a lake? Summer of 69? <laughs> no, it's one of the secret recipe ingredients. It's... Tap on an item to discover more about the colonel. Uh, you open the door to Colonel Sanders' closet and find a row of his signature white suits hanging within. You take one off its hanger and try it on. Wait, we, dude, hello? The jacket is a bit big for you, but it's soft and comfortable. You give yourself a deep hug, breathing in his scent. They say that home is where the heart is. Is this what they meant? Before you look any further, you hear Colonel Sanders returning. He has a new dish that he has been working on, and he wants you to taste it. You try to act casual until he asks you why you're wearing his jacket. I don't usually loan those out, but I must say, it does look good on you. Oh crap, the jacket! You forgot to take it off! 
You decide that now is your moment to make a big move. You tell him you're cold. You fess up and tell the truth. You confess. I, I think I've developed feelings for you. I, I might be developing feelings for you too, but I'm concerned I can't let anything get in the way of my dreams. Overwhelmed, take off the jacket and run for the door. But the thought of leaving Colonel in the midst of such an emotional breakthrough gives you pause. You stop yourself. Colonel. Hmm. Yes, send by fire. I honestly think this may be the beginning of something wonderful. I think you're right. We should take things slow. You talk late into the night and drift off into a slumber. Dream sequence. <laughs> You awake to a beautiful morning and Colonel Sanders hideaway. <laughs> to make the right decision on how to respond to Colonel Sanders, only time will truly tell. Today is the day that could change the rest of your life. You think about the new secret ingredient you just learned about. Blank. Some jurisdiction blank isn't even legal. And if the recipe is a secret, how will they know? Your thoughts are interrupted when Colonel Sanders emerges into the room. He's holding a gorgeously plated breakfast and your mouth waters at the sight of it. Here's a simple breakfast I just whipped up. It's meticulous. That is not breakfast. That is not breakfast. Let me tell you, that is not breakfast. Looks good. Not breakfast. Why can't you just take out the chicken and put some eggs there? That's still technically a chicken-related thing. You taste Colonel Sanders' food, and it takes you on a journey. When you return, he's waiting to ask you an important question. So, would you say that we're the perfect match? How presumptuous. My cuisine and your taste buds, that is. Such confidence, such grace. Could he be the world's greatest gift to cookery? It's good, but my mom made better. Oh no, Colonel Sanders' expression grows serious. Did your little jab land too hard? Colonel, I'm... Now I know what you're going to say. I need to be better. I'm going to leave my mark on this world. A single tear begins to pull in the corner of his eye as he gazes out the window. And with the right business partner... I, I know I can't fail. Business partner? Could be talking about you? It's all happening so quickly. Overcome with emotion, confused by your feelings, you're on the verge of tears. Unable to speak. The only answer you can find is to run out the door and get home. There's still one more day of school after all. The University of Cooking, so Academy for Learning waits for no one. You get home and find something very surprising. Your best friend is waiting there. Where have you been? I... Because I had one heck of a night. I've been desperate to talk to you about it, and I couldn't find you, and I got worried that something had happened to you. It's okay, I was just... But now that it turns out you're fine, I can finally get you up to speed on the saga of Miriam. Sure, but you will not believe what happened to me after school yesterday. I went on a date. I think I could believe that. Since I'd been partnered up with Clank, he asked me to go out with him. Of course I told him you better keep your dials turned to polite and respectful. I'm not that kind of girl. But he was just interested in spending some one-on-one -on -one time together, getting to know me. So I said, yeah, sure, I can get to know them. It's that little metallic guy. Long story short, he took me skydiving with his friends, but things quickly spiraled out of control. Did she just say skydiving as if that's a typical first date to go on with a, with a talking pressure cooker? <laughs> and now I'm not really sure where we stand. You don't give Miriam time to tell you. Her whole story, however, bottling up the detail of your own night is just too much to bear. And I went on a date too, back to Colonel Sanders' house where I spent the night with him. You what? Nothing happened, but the emotional connection? Wowzers. Together with your bestie, you feel like you could do anything. When you arrive at school, you encounter your rivals in the quad. You can tell from a distance they're picking on Pop, though he himself might not quite grasp that fact. Because, you know, he's Pop. What's so swirly? It sounds delicious. <laughs> oh, it's great. I'll order you, order you one up right away. I'll have my swirly with Sprinkles, please. He Sprinkles is a dog and a treat. Aww. You can get your swirly dipped, too. Why don't you pick on somebody your own size? Because I'm literally the biggest person at the school. There is that horse that Colonel Sanders rides to school, but who would dare pick on such a gentle and beautiful creature? You've got some nerve, Senpai Fire, suggesting I pick on a defensive horse. Defenseless horse? Now you're twisting my words and I won't have it. You clench your fist, but the injury from yesterday's mixer accident makes you wince with pain. Doesn't look like you can go on cooking like that. Might as well just give up. I'll never give up. Ever. Colonel Sanders arrives just as it appears things are close to boiling over, and naturally into a rude person. He senses that something has been going on. Is everyone excited for the final day of school? Set by fire, how's that hand feeling? I'm sure you'll be back in fighting form by this afternoon. Aren't you concerned about my my hands, Colonel? Yesterday I almost broke a nail winning so hard. Technically, I don't believe a winner was decided, but your presentation was quite impressive. 
What is he doing complimenting her? Mm. But what about the flavor of my delicate, warm, gooey chocolate sauce? It was clear that you're passionate about your, how your food is received. It's a lot of words to say. It was bland. Excuse me, Senpai Fire. I am more than capable of enough to speak for myself. Uh -huh. Maybe you could tell me more of your thoughts as we walk into class, Colonel. I'm always interested in discussing the fine art of fine foods. See you inside, Senpai Fire. She just brushed me off like that, like I'm just some common pleb. Annoyed by Colonel Sanders' inability to see Ashley for who you know she really is, you walk across the quad to get some it's a quad to get some distance. In an attempt to distract yourself from how slighted you feel by the interaction with Ashley, you take out the spell book you recovered yesterday and start flipping through the pages. Whoa, that's that book. It looks like bad news. It's just something I found lying around. It would appear to be some sort of grimoire, but I don't really believe in that magic stuff. <sighs> a grimoire? Like a book of spells? I don't know. Who would spend so much time decorating a magic book if it weren't really powerful? I can think of one surefire, surefire way to find out. You open a page covered with arcane warnings. Cast only in case of extreme emergency. It says around the edges of the page. I could use a spell here that says it will erase anyone I choose from all of my memories. If I scrub out Colonel Sanders, it would probably help me focus better on the upcoming final exam. That is way drastic. Couldn't you do something else? Like anything else. Not rooted in dark magic. Maybe tie a string around your finger. Okay, fine. It is drastic. But desperate times call for desperate measures. We've got a memory erasing spell right sitting right in front of you. And a pretty good excuse to try it out. Uh, I, I, I would not mess with dark magic. You take your friend's advice and put the book away. It's almost time for class. Sprinkles is already in the room waiting for students to arrive. I need water. Uh, okay. He curves his voice to make a quick announcement. I want you all to know, I feel something of a dog moment coming on, but I assure you, it's nothing to be afraid of. His cute little nose scrunches up and he begins to breathe quickly. He must be hungry, reach for some old homework he'd give him as a snack. Dogs can be rather unpredictable, especially sprinkles, wait to see what happens. Uh, Sprinkle stops in his tracks. He focuses in on the window. The room is deadly silent. When you follow his gaze, you see a tiny orange squirrel perched on the cherry tree outside. Sprinkle turns feral and runs to the window of the classroom. He begins barking uncontrollably at the squirrel outside. Terrence! I told you to never come back here, Terrence! I will destroy you, Terrence! <laughs> Sprinkles is barking ferociously, drool flying off of his face. The squirrel looks over, but he doesn't say anything back. You wonder... Is that even a talking squirrel? Who named him Terrence? <coughs> you better not show your chubby cheeks around here ever again. Jesus Christ. Ooh. <laughs> After Sprinkles is satisfied that his presence has been felled by not only Terrence, but any other squirrel in hearing distance, he returns to his professional tone. <clears throat> I apologize for the outburst. This actually brings up an important point. Thank you, Senpai Fire, for reminding me to dole out this indispensable bit of wisdom. You see... Before you can go any further, Miriam's love drama spills out over into the class. Sprinkles is interrupted by words and sparks coming from the back of the room. I told you to save it for after class. Bzz, bzz. You think I wanted to be thrown from a plane strapped to a stranger? <sighs> Miriam and Clank appear to be arguing, but you still haven't learned to speak Clark Clank's language of mechanical noises. But no, you had to show off to your cool kid friends Jeff and Joan. J and J forever. Watch us form a triangle in midair as we descend. Triangles are the strongest shape, don't you know? Bzz, bzz. Yeah, well, that doesn't make it a great date. Beep, we're... Oh. Then take Jeff and Joan with you. You can all hold hands as you pedal down the mountain or off a cliff for all I care. Sad beep. Clay begins to shudder. Steam pours out of the gaps in his panels and then a loud ding stops him in his tracks. Beep, bzz. No amount of seasoning is going to make me want to eat that clank. Clank burps out a completely deep fried sneaker. Considering that he himself has wheels, not feet, it's not entirely clear where it came from. <laughs> In terms of deep fried footwear, I guess it looks okay? Clank slowly rolls out of the room to be alone with his shoe. Everyone tries to pretend like they didn't see that entire thing go down. Nothing like a loud public breakup to cast a pall over the final day of school. Well, that was unfortunate. But we mustn't be distracted from what lies ahead. The final competition showdown challenge exam. I'm still working on the title, but I think you get it. Just how you approach this. See you all in the arena. Whew. But before you can think about your upcoming competition, there's a very beautiful soul nearby in need of a pep talk. Hey, Miriam, are you okay? 
Oh, okay. I'm so mad I could smash a tiny mug, spilling several droplets of hot cocoa all over the floor. How could it be embarrassed me in class like that in front of everyone? Your tiny cocoa was a delicious treasure, so you know that this breakup is no joke. You know that the source of her frustration is such a silly boy. Uh, I know that you know this, but I'm going to say it out loud. You don't need anyone. Me and you, we're going to cruise through this final test and hit the carpool lane to success city. Miriam brightens up, imagining the wind rushing through her short bangs, but she hesitates to embrace the feeling all the way. <laughs> You're not going to saddle up Colonel Sanders' stallion and ride off into the sunset without me? Of course not. Well, maybe sort of, but I'm sure there's a pony out there with your name on it and a ranch big enough for both of us and whoever else we want to bring along. If it's not Pop or Clank or anyone else you meet today, tomorrow, or this whole year, so what? You're a special person. You shouldn't settle for the first someone to show a little interest anyhow. Miriam gives you a big hug and wipes the tears from her cheeks. I should really review my menu for today. I'm going to make a very special soup. And I bet that Professor Dog is going to love it up. While you were pep-talking Miriam, you completely missed lunch. But that's okay because you had a better idea of how to spend the time before your exam. You've decided to head to the arena early to practice a dish. This is it. The location of your final challenge. A test of will. A test of courage. A test of talent. And a chance to beat the pants off Van Van, the supposed man-man, and his eviler counterpart Ashley. As planned... You begin to run through a quick test of recipe you've been working on. Senpai Fire's famous chicken pot pie. After practicing for months, making this dish come second nature to you, and you're able to quickly get a fresh pot pie in the oven. But as soon as you do, your cram session is interrupted by Colonel Sanders. Senpai Fire, what are you doing here? There's still time. There's still time before the final exam. Oh, just taking it all in. I'm beginning to visualize the success. I'm looking at my station and picturing victory. The pot pie has begun to bake, and it smells slowly, slowly filling the space around you. Mm. Visualize it, huh? That's too bad. I was hoping you were cooking something delicious. You would usually happily share your food with anyone who's hungry, but the last time you let Colonel Sanders get in your head, it cost you a cook-off. You decide that it's time to put your cooking above your romantic desires, but that decision gets hard to stick to when the oven timer goes off behind you. Oh, no! Okay, okay, you got me. I'm doing a little bit more than visualizing. I know, my nose can smell a pot pie from 400 yards. That's an oddly specific distance, but you'd expect nothing less from such an oddly specific man. You knew it was a pot pie just from the smell? Not just a pot pie, but a chicken pot pie with an all butter crust. And my nose is telling me something else. Oh no, is it burning? No, I could smell that it was made with a heaping helping of TLC. But it'll probably start burning any second if you don't pull it out. The moment of truth. Wow. That does actually look pretty good. It's the best pot pie I've ever tasted. I've always loved country cooking, and I could eat this all day. There's no time left. The final showdown is about to begin. Sprinkle lays down the ground rules. There are no rules. That is, except to cook with everything you've got. You step up for the cook-off of a lifetime. You decide that mac and cheese plus the pot pie you've been practicing are just the dishes that'll put you over the edge to victory. Meanwhile, both Van Van and Ashley are prepping wildly elaborate dishes for their usual over-the-top selves. Miriam has her giant magnifying glass and several sets of tweezers. She's definitely prepared to go big, going small. Whew. Colonel Sanders seems to be harnessing his 11 herbs and spices, but he's trying to find a way to improve on something his perfect... Oh, something perfect. His original recipe fried chicken. The intensity in the room starts at a full 10 out of 10, with a frenzy of action. Everyone is calling out really cool special cookie moves as they prepare their food. Wow, this is getting serious. Colonel Sanders batters his chicken as it levitates through the air. Egg wash! Miriam furiously injects ingredients into an itty bitty pot of broth. Best friend, Baster Blaster. <laughs> or Baster Blaster? Whatever, man. Baster? Baster? What, what is English? Van Van flexes his pectorals as he chops open a sea urchin. Let's rock and roid. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Asha scoops her pastries off the tray with lightning speed. Shallow personality spatula. <laughs> Even Clark or Clink is—I always want to call him Clark. Even Clink gets in on it. Fire style pressure point chicken cookie technique. <laughs> Wait, when did Clink learn to speak English? <gasps> it's a sing singularity, as was foretold. We mustn't let it happen, or the appliance uprising will take us all. Self-destruct. Van Van quickly unplugs Crank and rolls him out the back door of the arena. As you frantically prepare your dish, you notice Ashley has her spell book out. Is she going to use some dark magic to turn the tide? You've got a book of your own, and you're desperate not to see her win another battle. Should you take this opportunity to fight magic with magic, even if it's almost certainly evil magic? No, we do it the hard way. Who needs magic when you've got passion? 
I'm going to do it the hard way. Colonel Sanders sees that you've chosen to win on your own terms, and he gives you a subtle wink from across the room. <laughs> I believe in you, Senpai Fire. <laughs> That's beautiful. Miriam knows this, too. And I've always believed in you, Senpai Fire, since we were little kids, because I'm your best friend forever. You turn to notice that Miriam is at your station cheering for you. Miriam, what about your dish? If you're here cheering, who's cooking? Tiny food short cook time. I'm actually already done, so I thought I'd help you. That's sweet, but... Miriam tosses a handful of spices directly into your boiling noodles. Uh -huh. It's a secret ingredient. However, she doesn't know that Colonel Sanders made the first ingredient up to throw you off the trail of a secret recipe. The boiling hot... The boiling pot explodes, sending Miriam flying backwards. The watery noodles begin to swirl in the air, bubbling up into a dark cloud that thickens and congeals before your very eyes. It is I, Steve, the Spork Monster. Steve? Wait, what happened to Borko? You're not here to battle me, are you? We Spork Monsters are many. I think Borko had the day off, but you haven't conjured Steve, and I hate to battle. So I'd say you're doing pretty all right. Oh, hey, you're in the middle of cooking competition. I love this stuff. It's better than TV. You crazy kids and your culinary skills really impress me. Mind if I hang out? I'm, I'm sorry, Steve, but I'm, I'm kind of in the middle of something. Do you mind? Steve, the spork monster, noticed that you've got the grimoire stashed beneath the cooking station. I see what you're up to. Crisscross some magical items and accidentally summon me, huh? Ha, huh, you, yeah, you guessed it, sort of. If you're here, would you mind tossing some fresh noodles in a pot of salted water? I'd love to. I've always wanted to be a top chef, actually, you know, when I was just a little spork. Pop, back in the old country. You can feel Spork Monster winding up to tell a very long and involved story. You don't know exactly where they came from, but it seems like it was probably lonely there. Actually, you know what? Maybe you should watch from the stands. I, I really need to focus on this competition. I understand. It's kind of like that time in monster school that I had fallen asleep during scare tax class, and when I woke up, you toss a serious stare at Steve, and he takes the hint. Never mind. I'll tell you later. Good luck. Having suffered this huge setback, you don't know how you could ever win. Give up and drop out of culinary school? No, you summon extra power from deep down within yourself. I can do this. I have what it takes. I came here to win. Your hair turn your hair turns mac and cheese orange as culinary in energy flows through your body. Your heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for... Yes, Senpai Fire, you are the chosen one. You will avenge me. <laughs> the power you'd been summoning immediately fades back out. You interrupted my inspiring monologue. Oh. So, sorry. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for this moment. I will show the world my cookery. You begin to levitate off the ground. Energy courses through your body. Am I going Super Saiyan? Is, am I literally turning into a Super Saiyan right now? You know that with this power, you can do anything except turn back time, which would be super useful because while you're powering up, your chicken pot pie overcooked in the oven and can't be served. <laughs> But don't worry, dear Senpai Fire. You may have suffered some setbacks, but all is not lost. Impressed with your fortitude, Colonel Sanders decides that you have earned his support. I've been watching each day, and I must say, I'm truly impressed. You've been thinking on your feet and rolling with the punches. He steps up to your station and stands right beside you. I'm here to help. All you've managed to make is mac and cheese, and time is almost up, so you're going to need it. But Colonel Sanders, what about the test? What will happen to you? What about the rules? Following the rules has never really been my thing. I follow my heart. What a guy. Colonel Sanders unfolds a delicate white towel to reveal the most delicious fried chicken tenders you've ever laid your eyes on. And besides, sometimes unexpected combinations can have surprising effects that surpass their individual efforts. Are you suggesting if we combine forces, we can form the perfect food union? Time's up, students. With time expired, it's the moment everyone has been waiting for. You must now prepare to present your dishes. A handful of students stand tall, but the class seems incomplete. It seems we're missing some students. Pop? Clang? From off screen, you hear a pure and innocent giggle that can only come from one student. <laughs> I'm flying! It sounds like it's coming from that broom closet over there. Miriam, would you mind? Inside of the closet, you see Pop hanging on a broom hook by the elastic of his underpants. Pop, get down from there right now! Let me guess. Did the event have something to do with this? When someone asks for a wedgie, who am I to refuse? I thought a wedgie was a salad. It looks like Pop is eliminated from the challenge, seeing how he didn't cook anything. <laughs> I can't feel my legs. May I be excused? Sure. You kids and your pranks. I must say, it's not the worst prank in UCSAL history, but it's not exactly yearbook material. Wait a second. Pranks. Pranks. Clink. Where did that pressure cooker roll off to? You wait to hear a signature word beep or other onomatopoeia, but there's none. Somehow he must... He got... Somehow he got... Must have... Somehow, he must have gotten unplugged, I guess. We'll have to figure that out later. That leaves only four remaining students. Please
Please collect your final projects. Yes, it has been a long semester. Wow, three whole days long. But after days of hard work, the time has come for me to eat. Miriam, please step forward. Now describe your dish. I've made tender udon noodles and savory soup. My word, it's so delicate. Is that a teeny tiny... <laughs> oh, Naruto Maki? I spy a foot in this itsy bitsy bowl. I hope I said that right. I don't... Yes, Chef. Please call me Sprinkles. Chef is my father's name. Yes, yeah, sprinkles and some green tea made from baby tea leaves that I picked myself. Sprinkles carefully sniffs around the dish before opening his mouth and letting just the tip of his pink tongue dip into the bowl. Sublime. But anyone else like a taste? Oh, come on. I'm not one of those dogs who doesn't floss. I even have a really cute electric toothbrush for dogs. Fine. I'll enjoy it all by myself. And in a flash, the entire meal has been devoured. Not that it took much. It was less than a thimble's worth of soup. A+. plus. Rarely do I taste the dish with as much love poured into it as yours. Yay! Miriam is overjoyed. She gives you a huge hug. Thank you, Senpai Fire, for helping me to believe in myself. Van Van, you're up. Now describe your dish. I made... Uni over smooth egg custard and an axe-hewn urchin shell topped with caviar. That looks disgusting. Did you skewer one type of urchin with spines from a second different colored type of urchin? Yes, Sprinkles. A bit much, don't you think? That's exactly why I did it. A bit much is kind of my brand. Doesn't it look cool? Sprinkles leans in to sniff the uh, uni, but he can't get his nose close enough on account of all the spikes. He begins to paw at it erratically, causing the custard to slosh around. Oh, God. Please be gentle with my cuisine. <laughs> Finally, Sprinkles goes all in, tongue first, but he can't get past all the needles. He reels back as his tongue is poked and prodded. Ouch! My tongue! The professor appears to be having an allergic reaction to the sting. Oh, God. I can't eat this. It keeps poking my tongue. Disqualified. <laughs> a stunning turn of events. Who would have thought that serving food in a bowl made of needles could make it difficult to eat? Dejected, Van Van does not go gentle into the night. Disqualified? For glamour? Don't discount simplicity. This isn't the last you've heard of me. Before forcing us to endure his swollen tongue for another moment, Sprinkles graciously laps up a bowl of milk. I know, I know. Yeah, I'm a dog and I drink milk. Get over it. Sometimes it helps calm my agitated tongue. Next student, Ashley, it's time to step up. Now describe your dish. I made orange blossom Turkish delight in a light rose water syrup topped with French meringue and connected by sugar glass. That actually doesn't sound too bad. Indeed, it's quite delightful. However, I'd ask that you please refrain from eating it or attempting to taste it in any way. It's very fragile and meant to be a display piece. Don't eat the food at a cooking school? Got toast in your ears or something sent by fire? I told you it's a display piece. Ashley, I must say, it is beautiful. However, this is a cooking competition at a cooking school. Yeah, which is why I cooked it. And did an extremely good job cooking it, too. I didn't realize that we were having an eating exam. If I wanted to be judged on eating, I'd go to the College of Eating, School for the Hungry. Suppose you could smell it if you absolutely insisted, but don't breathe too hard. You might disrupt the sugar spiral. If the food cannot be eaten, it cannot be judged. You are disqualified. Rage overtakes Ashley, and she finally cannot keep her two-faced routine up. You wouldn't know high-end cuisine if it cooked you. And with that, Ashley storms off to rededicate herself to being the best, but this time without being shackled by trying to be fake nice and liked by everyone. This isn't the last you've heard of me, either. If this class gets much smaller, I'll be teaching myself. You and Colonel Sanders, Sanders the final cook, step up together. Two chefs? What began as a bowl of delicious mac and cheese has become something else. He examines it closely, sniffing an eye in the bowl. You know what really is good? They're mashed, they're potato bowls or whatever, whatever you call them. They always are really good. He examines it closely, sniffing an eye in the bowl. Uh-oh, I don't have a good feeling about this. From somewhere in the room, a literal drum roll plays. Just when I thought I've seen everything in this kitchen, you give me this, this, thing, and completely blow me away. In my 49 dog years of life, I have never tasted anything so delici delicious and perfectly balanced. It's so delicious, in fact, that everyone passes the class. You pass, you pass, and you pass, and you get a pass. Everyone gathers around and partakes of the mac and cheese bowl. They all seem to transcend this reality into another dimension. You win. Together, you and Colonel Sanders have made a new menu item. The new menu item is so impressive, even the 
Even the Van Van and Ashley are drawn. Why did it say even the? Even Van Van and Ashley are drawn back and by its magnetic fragrance. They're crying? Oh, God. When they gaze upon your mac and cheese bowl, they admit that you are indeed an excellent chef. Sprinkle declares that you have passed. Everyone has passed. There were supposed to be more battles, but come on. How could they be better than this one? Now that the school year is complete and everyone has graduated, the students return for one last assignment to get their groove on. The cafeteria has been completely redecorated in order to serve as the site of the school's graduation dance. Compared to the massive high-tech cooking arena, the humble decor seems downright cute and cozy. <gasps> DJ Dog is in the house! Oh, oh, oh! You knew that Sprinkles was a master chef, but also a world-renowned turntablist? Who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Van Van and Ashley tell everyone that they've committed themselves to righting the wrongs they did while they were the villains. Because of mac and cheese and chicken in a bowl? For a moment, you actually believe them. Not another haunting. No ghost allowed at graduation. It's clearly written in the school's bylaws. I was never actually a ghost. It was all a trick to get you to finally notice me. Oh, amusing. And now that everyone is together, it's the Spork Monster. He is totally mellowed out. Everyone, the Spork Monster is no more. From here from here out, I prefer that everyone refer to me by my new name, Party Monster. Student tries to finish what he had to say, but everyone is too wrapped up talking to Spork. Sorry. Par party Monster. Why does nobody want to know this kid's name? That is so sad. Dejected, student walks off. Maybe things didn't work out for Miriam romantically, but she found the love in her cooking, and you know she's going to do great. A red carpet rolls out across the floor of the ballroom. It's like a Hollywood movie premiere. Who could command such an entrance? It's Pop. He's arrived late to the dance, but apparently for good reason. Okay. Uh, walk in the carpet, you see perched atop his dirty chef's hat. A crown? Welcome back, Pop. I know you weren't able to complete the final exam and accept your diploma, so we had it mailed directly to your father. We figured it was the least we could do for the school's dean. Oh, now I get it. And we get a new wing on the school, not to mention the honor of educating the son of the chancellor of such and such. The music at the dance is interrupted by the sound of sparking and electrical hissing. It's Clank, who has arrived late to the dance. Now that I have graduated, I can reveal my truth. Whoa, he's still doing the talking thing. I am Clank, and I am not of this earth. I'm actually from a faraway planet in another dimension. What? What? I actually feel like I knew it this whole time. Now that I have learned the ways of your kind, I must return. Miriam, will you come with me? I don't know what to say. Besides, no, obviously. I have just begun to learn who I really am. This isn't the time for me to devote my life to figuring out who you are, Clank. You're blown away by Miriam's maturity. It's pretty clear she's managed to surpass you in that regard. I understand, kind of. Humans are weird. A portal opens up and Clank disappears through it. <laughs> Finally, Colonel Sanders arrives. Howdy, classmates. Just like the first day you met him, he has come prepared to feed the entire class. However, it's not enough to just give them a bucket of chicken. This time, it's a full meal. I didn't get to be the most famous chicken man in the history of chicken and man by not reminding people to go out and buy my chicken. The end? No, it's not the end. <laughs> As everyone feasts on their delicious chicken dinner, Colonel Sanders finds you sitting at the edge of the dance floor. Senpai Fire, what are you doing sitting all alone? Oh, you know, just waiting for the right person to ask me to dance. I wonder, might you tell me, what are the qualities that you would expect to find in such a lucky person? Off the top of my head, oh, I don't know. A spicy musk, a tidy goatee, and a degree from the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning, just to name a few. It truly is my lucky day. Would you dance with me? Yes, I would love to. As you glide across the dance floor, hand in hand, Colonel Sanders, the future stretches out in front of you. And once my 100th franchise is up and running, I'll be ready to take a day off, and I'll be so glad to spend it together with you, Senpai Fire. How sweet. We'll work together and play together. Colonel Sanders stops dead in his tracks. Work together? Well, I, I think this is something I'll just need to do by myself. But who will help you run your restaurants? I don't believe I need help. Besides, based on your time at school here, do you really think running restaurants is the best path forward? Could it be you found a love connection but failed to earn Colonel Sanders' respect as a chef? Can you live with only half of him? Will you be able to endure sharing him with this other love, the life of an entrepreneur? I suppose I could roll at pastry school. Oh, my dear Senpai Fire, I'm sure that you'll find your place eventually. And along the way, you'll have me by your side. The end? 